welcome back to the Be Free Podcast. Today, we are trying... Okay, I know you like your rosé and your darkers. I do. Your dark stuff. Yes, yes. So this actually is from a African-American-owned wine company um, owned by Chris Christensen. Wow. Yeah, it's called Boatkin Wines, but I ordered it because Maker... Um, wines, I guess, is doing like a collab with them. Okay. So they put them in cans. Looks good, right? So I, I am trying the sparkling Sauvignon Blanc. Oh my goodness. This is so cute. Yeah, right? You see this? Yeah, it's sparkling rosé. Yes. Ooh. Okay, so let's try it. Okay. We could have gotten fancy, but stick with the... The with can the is so cute though. Right? I love it. It matches my outfit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How is it? It's fizzy. It's fizzy. Okay, but I it's forgot. Great. It's <laughs> Another reason why I wanted to try this was because it was like no added sugars. Um, and you know I love that. So it was, it's, it's stuck on the whole fit, you know. Yeah, wellness. it's really good. Mm -hmm. If it has no added sugar, it's mm -hmm. kind of sweet too. Very good. Very good. Okay, mm. so today I wanted to Refreshing. get into, top, into the topic. Yes. Sorry, I cut you off. Um, <clears throat> I was reading this article on failures mm. and disappointments and moving on and how do you mm. ex exit that time in your life and do you carry it with you? What do you do? I wanted to chat about that. Wow. Yeah. I mean, like career failures, you know, obstacles and all that. Yeah. I mean, man, that's... The life of an actress, mm. <laughs> you know, you can talk yeah. about how, you know, disappointment because you get really attached to a role or you think you're going to get, yeah. you know, something. Um, and I think that's something that you have to learn early on mm -hmm. to let that go. Yeah. You know, to leave the, what do they say? You're supposed to leave it at the audition. Leave it there. But it's, it can be super disappointing after a period of time and you're not getting the things or that you really want to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that can like weigh on you, yeah. right? And it can make you bitter. <laughs> so bitter. <laughs> and then like, I hate you this get, casting I, director. Yeah, or I, I don't want to do this anymore. And people yeah. leave the business because of that, yeah. you know? So I think there's like, you know, you really, I think um, experiencing a lot of disappointment early on in my life mm -hmm. has kind of taught me to like, like try to let it go yeah. the sooner the better. I agree. Um, my my mm. daughter works and... Mm -hmm. It, it's, I don't know if she just learned this on her own, but mm -hmm. as far as walking into the door, you know, when auditions were in person before the whole COVID thing, right. um, she never was bothered if they didn't call. Really? Ever. And so it's kind of given her like this thick skin, whereas my son, yeah. like, I mean, he just hates to fail at anything, mm -hmm. but she's like, that's oh, okay. We'll get the next one. Mm -hmm. It's so good to learn that so young. So young. That's very mature. Yeah, very mature. Yeah. yeah. Um... <laughs> What, you have a story? <laughs> no. I, oh. I well, I was just thinking about my overthinking <laughs> and perfectionism when yeah. you said. I I mean, I definitely, I struggle with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. you are very helpful yes. in reminding me, just calm down, Jennifer. Just, just, are you thinking too much? Yeah. We got this. <laughs> you got it. You, you totally go. got it. Yeah, but I, I think that's a, it's a hard thing. You know, tr I, I like to do things in excellence. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I think there's a balance between wanting to do things in excellence. Yeah. And then, you know, having this idea of like perfectionism. Right. You know, and so I think I like to struggle. I'm, I don't like to struggle. I struggle between like those two. Right. Um, but I, I find too, I mean, correct me if, if I'm wrong, um, when you put more effort and mm. more time and you're more committed to something and it fails, it hurts a little deeper than, oh, yes, right? Absolutely. I've gone like uh, half, you know, half the drive into something. And if I, if it doesn't work out, I'm, you know, I'm fine. Yeah. And then, you know, you get to a point where you're like, you can get to a point yeah. where, I've been before of like not committing to things or not really giving your all to things because you you're didn't afraid. really maybe deal with that disappointment <laughs> yes. before. So you're like kind of ex you're like expecting it to go wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 
you know, whether yeah. it's in relationships or I don't know, just anything. But yeah. you get to a certain point where you're like, okay, well, yeah. You, well, maybe, and you can self sabotage too yeah. because you you're expecting it. Yeah. But what if it never happens? Yeah. Could have been a great, I don't know, great project, great relationship, something. But you're like, eh. Yeah, it's not going to work out anyway. It's not going to work out. Yeah. So. so yeah. <laughs> I remember, okay, so here's a good example. I was um, in my 20s and I had gone to school to work behind the scenes, you know, producing mm-hmm. and casting and all that. And it was my a major audition that I had and I just wasn't into it. And mm. I was on the phone with a good friend of mine who's was uh, I went to college with her, and she's like, "Well, go in there since you don't care already. Just go in there, do what you need to do. Call me when you're done." Like she mm. she already knew it was kind of over the whole. And mind you, just like you, I've been in this industry since I was a child. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. so now I'm done with college. You know, my last audition because I just wasn't feeling it anymore. So I go in. I do it. Don't even know if it's well, right? <laughs> Walk out, you know, call her. Okay, so we're meeting tonight for dinner, blah, 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 blah. Sure enough, kid you not, by 8 p.m. that night, I get a phone call with the producer and director on the phone saying, you got the job. Oh, my gosh. So I'm like, I'm, out, I'm moving to Canada, guys. Like, And I gave, I gave up. Not like gave up, but I was just over it. Yeah, I wonder if that had something to do with it. Like when you put so much effort into something, it kind of stresses you out. You might not see it. Yeah, well, it's almost like surrendering, right? It's almost like when you surrender to God, like Mm -hmm. you're finally like, okay, like let 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 your will be done, you Mm -hmm. know. And I feel like I have a similar story. Like as you were um, telling that, Uh uh, the audition for my wife and kids. Actually, let me hear it. I didn't really thought about it until you said that. See, but so. You know, uh, so with auditions, you know, when they were in person, you would go to the mm-hmm. audition, the casting director, then you would go back for the producers, then yep. you would go back, you know, again, maybe with some more producers, yep. then you would go Exec- back again. For executives. <laughs> for like uh, like a screen test mm-hmm. or a chemistry read, yep. right, with the network and all that stuff. So um, at – and then there's usually at the um, screen test, there's another actress there yep. or a couple actresses there. Anyway, there I got to the screen test, and there was another actress there. How old were you? And I was 15. Okay. And so she looked just like Tisha. And so, oh. and I knew they were recasting this role, and I felt like maybe I look a little bit older and I look different. I literally got the girl's autograph, and I was like, you're going to get this. Wow, see? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, you, like, she looked just like her, and... And so I got her autograph and I went in there and I, and I did, you know, I had fun Mm -hmm. and then I let it go. And then like, it wasn't like, you know, we got down the street. It was like maybe an hour later or something and we got the call and I was so shocked because I literally, I I obviously wanted to to break that. Right, but you kind of let it go. But I totally let it go. I got her autograph. And then I was like in disbelief, like me. Are you I sure? Got it? You sure? Right? Was her name Jennifer too? Because you called the wrong one. But it goes back to that of like you know, I I think I had just gotten to a point where I was like, I, I'm gonna surrender, you know, yeah. like I like I don't care. I'm gonna have fun and I'm gonna do this. And then I left it there. I was like, you she's gonna me. get it. I had fun. Right. That's the thing. Isn't that weird? So weird, but I can think of like different instances where or that you've just where let go, just I guess. let go, yeah, and then the pot- and then the greatest blessings come come out of that from after you let go. Is that from just expecting failure, where we just like whatever we just we're letting go, or is it just I don't know what to to pinpoint that to. I don't know. Especially to... something like that you want so bad, right? Yeah. We always want our role so bad. It's, I mean, we've passed on some that are like, eh. <laughs> but you know, for the most right. part, we really want it. So do we just give up? Like not give up, but I guess that's the wrong word for it. But are we so used to failure mm. and that we're just like, Ugh. no, I mean, we get, we, we, we get, um, not, not, not the word failure, but you and I, I mean, it's a rejection um, environment, right? Right. Um, you have to be tough skin. So I'm, I, maybe that is part of it. I think it's also realizing that there's a 
more purpose to why we're put in this industry anyway True. you know and and so it's like there's like you know the expectation of um i mean failures you know disappointments and all of that stuff but then there's like okay well you know god wouldn't place me here if i wasn't supposed to be here mm -hmm. so even though all of this rejection all of this you know disappointments maybe it didn't work out this time maybe it didn't work out that time but there's also a sense of like hope that i carry that okay god like you placed me here yeah I'm here for a reason and what not necessarily just for myself and selfish reasons. Like, obviously, this is my dream and I love yeah. what I do, but there's a higher purpose being served mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And what I, what, if that's being on a project and being able to, like, you know, connect with someone mm -hmm. and, um, and that in that way or behind the scenes or, the scenes. or yeah. at an audition or whatever it is, I feel like that's so I think that kind of makes it come full circle for yeah. me. There's so many aspects too of life that that could relate to. Like mm -hmm. I'm, when you said that, I was just thinking about like people who try to get pregnant and they're on right. themselves and on themselves and then they just give up and a lot yes. of them get pregnant. Yeah. Right? You just let go and you're like, okay, well, whatever. If it happens, it happens. Yeah. Or like passing the bar exam. You stress out, you fail a couple of times and then you're like, I'm just over it. I'm just, you know, I know it already. I'm just stressing myself out and you, you know, end up passing it. Yeah. There's so many different life lessons there. You yeah. Can go, gosh. I think a one thing for me was I know what we talked about, like my divorce, and that was a pivotal point in my life of really deciding, okay, I felt like, you know, I failed, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. whether the marriage, marriage when marriage doesn't work out or relationship doesn't work out you know, I, I feel like you can only take accountability for yourself right right so I was like okay that failed I didn't work out the way yeah. I thought it you know was supposed to work out but I decided from that point which could look like a setback or I could have you know stayed and been bitter mm -hmm. and and blamed you know him and whatever so but i was things, like okay yeah. i'm gonna decide to be better i'm gonna decide to grow i'm gonna decide that i'm going to be the best woman that i could be for my daughter but also for myself yeah and not you know make the same choices or same decisions like this is going to be a pivotal moment in my life where i'm going to transform into like the best person i right. could possibly be right the comeback you, the comeback yeah. you know and i i i feel like i i did i mm -hmm. went on that journey of self growth and did you hold on to that failure for a while or were you pretty good at like all right this is i will learn from my mistake moving on uh i because some people hold it. I definitely struggled with it, but mm -hmm. I it was a work in progress, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. because I feel like I failed my daughter. Mm. And I think that was like the biggest thing because I grew up with I grew up with a single mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did have a stepdad, but I wanted my mom, I wanted my daughter to have her father in her home. Like mm -hmm. I was like that was that was really what I like always wanted right. and dreamed of. So I felt like I failed her in a sense because mm -hmm. I like couldn't do that for her. Right. So that was something that I had to, um, like, restructure, right. like, you know, in my mind, you know, of, like, of I didn't fail her. But you didn't. <laughs> but I, I didn't. Yeah, you didn't. But it was just, it was it was something that I really mm -hmm. had to, like, work through. Because you um, can take it as the other side, too. Like, um, I failed, my, or my marriage failed. Right. I'm going to prove to my daughter, you can do yes, this on your own. Exactly. Like, and I and I think that's what I proved, you know, mm -hmm. to her. I was like proved to myself. Yeah. You know, I was like, just things happen in life. And I think that was like the biggest thing. Cause yeah. you know, things happen, divorce happens, things don't work out the way that mm -hmm. you think that they're supposed to. And instead of staying stuck in that negativity or in that rut or in that dark hole or that place, yep. you know, we have a choice. Yeah. And we can choose to be better. We can choose to grow. We can choose to, it's not like it'll happen overnight, but it, it yeah. can be little steps, but it's just making the choice and allowing God to like help you and give you the grace and the wisdom to figure out what that journey is for you, whether, yeah. no matter what it is. Yeah. I've seen a, a different, uh, a difference in character, like characteristics as far as some of my, um, like extended friend circle goes, um, if they've had any trauma in their lives, mm. those that haven't let it go, mm -hmm. it, 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 it weighs on them. 
Yeah. Or it's a different personality. You Absolutely. know, it's the woe me and it's like, oh, it's it's kind of draining as a friend, you know. Yeah. Um, and you try to counsel them through it, but some people just can't do it. But you can see a different, like, you're so light and, you know, bubbly. And it's Thank because you. you know, let's let this go. Like, let's learn yeah. and let's keep moving. But some people can't do that and it's very apparent. Yeah, I think if you if you view trauma and things happening to you um, and you don't take – I don't want to say accountability because there's a lot of things that we can't help that. Yeah, we can't, yeah. So, but it's like this victim mindset, Mm -hmm. you know, then you can think that the world is against you. Right. You know, and so it's really about saying, yeah, like, like I, I, I told you, um, I think in other episodes I, um, um, shared that I was sexually Mm -hmm. abused when I was a a really, a small child Mm -hmm. and so that I had nothing to do with, no. you know, it happened, right? right? But I can stay mad at, you know, the people who knew or I can be bitter about that and I can, you know, that obviously impacts me, yes, it impacts does. My, indeni- my identity and it's not fair. It wasn't fair and I can stay in that or I can say, okay, like I can choose to learn signs you, yeah around. learn signs mm-hmm. i can feel empowered that okay that happened to me i'll make sure that yep. i'm aware of that for my child exactly. like my daughter that that won't happen i'll yeah. be more um intentional about having conversations mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. also like you know just working on my mind set of that you know that i can i only have control over how i can react now yeah you know, my reactions now. So it's unfortunate that not everyone can get to that space. Yeah. You know, because some people just truly can't, Mm. you know, we talk about this all the time where, um, (laughs) where you're like, you remember how I always do that little, like I'm in a dog. I'm like, (laughs) the little paddling. Yeah. I'm like, we are swimming and we are still drowning and here comes a wave, you know, Yeah. like some, for some people, Mm. these waves keep coming and a failure and, getting knocked down and they just can't get over it. And and I think that that comes from, um, not comes from, but I do think that the strength for me has been in opening up to my community and to friends and not, you know, I have the tendency to like, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm the oldest in my family, you know, the oldest child. So I'm like, okay, I'll figure it out. I'll do it. You know, and I'm, and I usually, you know, I like to be the light in people's life and not like feel like I'm bringing bad stuff. So I kind of like go away and I deal with my own things, but I feel like Mm -hmm. that that's not always helpful. And, you know, when the waves come crashing, you really do need to have community and have friends who know exactly what's going on so that they can be there to pull you out of that wave. They can throw you a lifesaver for, yeah. Yeah. Something, you know, because that's life. Like it's life. It's, it's like, like we were talking about, it's not like, you know, this happens, you know, and then that's never going to happen. It's going to come in another way. It's going to come in another way. And there's, there, it's just life is, you know, keeps on happening, you yeah. know, things happen and, and you learn and you grow and it's not always good, but it makes, you know, the bad times make you appreciate, you know, yeah. the good in your life and you grow and you learn. And That's definitely so. something. Um, yeah. I've learned probably in my thirties. Definitely. I've, I wouldn't change any of my failures. Wow. I, I really wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, as hard as they were, I wouldn't change any of my failures because I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have the mindset that I do. Um, the, the out, you know, just the, I, I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't have the same mindset. And I think also failures, setbacks, or mm-hmm. um, just, you know, those things that happen to us that aren't necessarily we view as positive, it helps us to be more compassionate to, yeah. and understanding to um, other people in our lives and be able to, you know, we're all on, the, all on this journey together. Right. You and know? you might have passed it and I'm coming right behind you right. or, you know. And then and then you can speak to that mm-hmm. because you've been there before and you've mm-hmm. overcome. Right. You know, and so then I'm like, wow, like. Well, she did it, so I, I'm going to get through this. Yeah, you know, so so yeah. I get I I get that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to 
<laughs> setbacks and disappointments. <laughs> Two failures. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> this is good. This is a very good. It's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that. <laughs> no, but I wanted to talk. I wanted to finish our conversation. I love you, man. You're so funny. <laughs> I wanted to finish it because we were talking about just mm-hmm. well, you. Well, no, I'm losing track here. You you said a sentence um, before that you're like, oh, I wish I didn't bring that up. I should have brought it up later because I had a point to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was talking about you are enough. Yeah. Like me just <sighs> me just feeling like I'm enough mm-hmm. um, has you know there i mean it definitely disappointment setbacks and all those things can make you feel like yeah, like am i not. enough is I there know. something i should have done more of mm-hmm. you know or you know something like that so um that's definitely um an ongoing that's that's an not a struggle but i think that's something that's ongoing that it's constantly has to be checked into and nurtured yeah right mm-hmm. your your self-love it's like this little voice self-worth yeah right that you are enough and i think that um things in life can chip away at that you know yeah. like setbacks or just like do you think women have it harder though because given like magazines commercials you know social media social media but the way we look you know let's let's even start mm-hmm. before social media just us right. as kids looking at that thinking i need to be like that but no you're enough i love now how um everyone like uh, this a certain generation has come up and they're very adamant like no we are enough you're gonna like us for who we are Absolutely. this is what i look like love it or leave it Right. Get off my page. Yeah. I love that confidence and that boldness. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and when I was younger, the thing, the body type that was in style was like the very anorexic. Like cake moss. Yes. You know. Like like your bones showing and all that stuff. And now I feel like it's such a different generation where it's like, it doesn't matter what I look like. Mm -hmm. You're going to, I'm going to embrace me and I'm going to love me. Right. And I, I love that movement of like just empowerment. Well, and let's, let's do point out though, it's not like models like that we're just saying you know they're beautiful they're healthy what they look yeah, like it's just not everyone yeah. looks like them yes so we need you know so, yeah and whatever natural state that you are in to love the skin that you're right. in you know right they're beautiful and so are you like, yes yeah and then it's all and it's not all about the physical right you know it's about how you feel it's about who you are as mm-hmm. a person mm-hmm. and i think that that's, you know, something that we both have in common yeah. that we really try to work on, you know, our inner man mm-hmm. just as much as we, you know, how we present ourselves. Yeah. You know, it's like we love eating healthy. Mm-hmm. We love, um, you know, working out and all that stuff. But we also do the spiritual and emotional yep. mental, work, mental work, you know, as well, you know, so that like our whole whole yeah, everything, self, everything is, is healthy. I'm so glad you mentioned that because there's so many times where... I have, you know, because we all go through these like highs and lows in life, right? Right. But, you know, sometimes at my highest mental high, I've been my heaviest and Mm. I have loved the way I look, Mm -hmm. right? And sometimes at my highest um, mental high, I'm like, I haven't been eating right or whatever and I don't like the way I look, you know? It's just, just to know that, I'm enough, like mentally, as long as I, I, that's what I've learned. Like the mental health, just when I feel good up here, I don't even care. You don't even care. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I can look back. Like when I was younger, I definitely struggled with body issues, Mm -hmm. Um, whether it was with like not eating or like eating too much or just like I placed so much on the way that I looked. Mm -hmm. And all of the outside stuff, and I didn't really um, check in with myself. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think when I was younger, I, I knew that something was off, mm-hmm. but what I wasn't mean? really fully aware of like, you know, I would do things to like, you know, I would buy like I'd be like, okay, well, I don't feel good, so I'm gonna go like buy myself a new outfit or buy okay, okay. or do these things, but it was very surface. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't. Um, 
it, it, and then I would still feel unfulfilled or I still yeah. feel ugly or I still feel like unworthy or I would still feel still like, there. yeah, it was still there. It didn't actually make me feel better. It was mm-hmm. very temporary. That's mm-hmm. what it was. It was very temporary. And so, um, when I was around like 18, I, you know, realized that I needed to, I went on this, like started going on this journey of like, like, why am I, why don't I like, like myself? Like, mm. why can't I, re- like, where the world probably thinks you love yourself. Right. Right. So I, I to everyone else, I, I like happy Jen, you right. know, she's so positive mm-hmm. and she's always smiling and she has you know, everything. But inside I like, I really didn't feel good about me. Right. And it was nothing that I could do like, or buy or eat or mm-hmm anything like that to make me feel good about myself and so that's when I figured I was like well what is wrong with me I started just asking myself like mm-hmm. like you know getting quiet with myself um and then therapy is I'm a big advocate yes. of therapy, therapy counseling um it, I think you know having someone to talk you through you know um your self your your life yeah. your your history and, and kind of guide you through that because yeah. you sometimes if, you're only hearing you and if you don't know where to start mm-hmm. you don't know you just don't know just don't you know. don't know and having someone that's unbiased because they're yeah. not your family they're not your friends they're not going to tell you just what you want them to hear I mean yeah. granted you are paying them but that is their but job still. you're paying them to tell like yeah. to help you yep and then you can walk away with it thinking oh I never thought of it about you know that right. way right and so that's yeah. when I realized, like, oh, I had a lot of <laughs> yeah. things that I hadn't really dealt with that were contributing to, like, my low self-esteem and my self-worth issues. Mm-hmm. And and so then that's when I started, like, being more aware of, like, of, like oh, like, yeah. <laughs> going to the store and buying <laughs> things and <laughs> doing all these things is not actually going to make yeah. me feel better. Yes, it's not. No. No, I need Shopping to do the once work. once in a while. I mean, I... Man, <laughs> chocolate was my thing. We have put down bags of chocolate. <laughs> White bags. chocolate covered strawberries mm. from Godiva. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Anytime I, I was tried sad, that, I would but... go and get those. Okay. That mm. was, I digress. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yes, I digress too because I know you were But you were I, going. I think you get to a point in life where you're like, okay, what is it? Yeah. Because I don't want these temporary fixes anymore. I want to actually love me and be content with me and look in the mirror no matter what I look like and say like you're amazing you're, yeah and I, I love and I love you and I don't care what you look like and and feel that too and feel it all the time so yeah that's tough because in life I've like there's always like these these stepping stones that we just as you know as a not aggressive but competitive individuals to our own selves mm. you know I if I could get here, this would be awesome. Oh. If I could do this, this would be awesome. But when you get there, it's great, but there's still that lingering feeling, mm-hmm. right? I, it's like, I want more. And so is it unsatisfactory or yeah. are you just carrying whatever feelings you didn't deal with back then, you're just carrying them with you the whole way up? Yeah. You know, there's billionaires that are billionaires, but they're not happy. You know, well, because success or I should say not success, achievements don't equate to happiness. Yeah. You know, they don't always equate to fulfillment. Mm-hmm. I think I, in my opinion, the only true fulfillment that you can have is, is it, your inner peace, your inner self, I right? Agree. And, I agree. and your relationship with God, yeah. right? There's like, I feel like there's a place in all of us that only God can fill that, mm-hmm. you know, to know that you're unconditionally loved no matter no what. No matter what. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why people go to these levels and they achieve these things mm-hmm. and they still feel like they want to kill themselves right. because there's still an emptiness that they thought they were going to get from a material thing or from an achievement or from mm-hmm. validation from people. And that's just not, it's not fulfilling. It's not fulfilling. You know, so, you know, it's really important that we do the work on ourselves. You know, we And open up a little bit more to those around us and have that tribe, you know. Right. I mean, everyone like that's been in that situation of, you know, God forbid, you know, taking your own life or anything, but having that community or that tribe around you that someone actually is listening, like actually picking up things that are just not 
the norm mm -hmm. or saying like, hey, I thought you were okay, you good? But but really like making sure yeah. like, you know what? I'm sleeping over this week, whether you like <laughs> it or not. Right. You know, because some people just can't. I'm, I'm just saying as far as the mental side goes, they, they cannot get out of that. And if you're not going, if you don't have that spiritual or that connection or that relationship with God and you don't want to go to, um, you don't want to go to help to um, uh, psychiatrists or, mm -hmm. you know, counseling, mm -hmm. then you're relying on yourself or the peers that you think know what's going on. Right. That really don't. Yeah. And I, and I think that, you know, it's really important for us all, like it does take a community it to does. be on the lookout, to be more aware, um, to be more intentional, intentional about checking in with people, mm -hmm, yeah. you know, and noticing those details with them and, and not being so passive. We're caught up with our own lives and our own stuff that we're not, you know, looking for the signs right. because like we're going through so much right now oh my gosh it's, it's and one thing happens and then another one happens yeah happens and like. so there's just a lot of pressure there's just so many so many things going on in all of our lives yeah. you know but we really do need each other yeah I agree mm -hmm. I totally agree it's mm -hmm. have you I found um just that alone of knowing who your tribe is like my tribe as I've gotten older has gotten so much smaller smaller like yes. <laughs> right because it's there now there are times in our lives where we don't check in with certain people just because truly we are busy in life right um but i will throw out a text mm -hmm. you know or i will you know throw a phone call leave a message like hey i was just thinking about you and i will i will tell them straight up like some of my friends like i've been awful i am so sorry i've been meaning to call you i just yeah. haven't how are you doing i'm going to call you later um but there are some of those other friends that just don't even reach out. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I could have been going, any one of us during this time have, could be going through anything, but um, to have someone reach out, to know that someone's right. just thinking about you no matter what, like out of the blue, it means so much. So my, my circle has gotten a lot smaller um, because me knowing that I am enough means that my circle knows that I'm enough yes and if my circle is too That's big so to not care like if I'm here or not right be gone you know <laughs> right no I I totally agree with that yeah yeah and I think it's I I definitely feel like as I've gotten older you know I have a lot of people that I know and a lot of people are friends and like I'm I love I I love people. Right. You know, you know this about you me. I love people. I love talking to people. Mm -hmm. Like I just am like I've always been this way. Mm -hmm. You know, but I definitely know who's my tribe. Mm -hmm. And I you know, you you have to know who you can rely on and who you can reciproc who can reciprocate the mm -hmm. same effort, the same intentionality, yeah. the same love mm -hmm. in return because because we are all going through so much and yeah. especially us being moms and having families and just all, all of that, our time is limited. Our energy is limited. And so I think, you know, when we talked about burnout on the, on one of the other podcast episodes, I think it's knowing where to place your energy and mm -hmm. where, you know, like, cause you can't, you can't give it to yeah. everyone mm -hmm. and it be wasted in yeah. a sense. You know, you have to know that it's a, Someone else is going to be able to fill back up your tank too, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You so, have to love yourself to know that. Yes. You know, that goes into the self-love part. Right. Right? Yeah. Like, I love myself enough not to surround myself with fake people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, you know? I know our industry is, like, so fake. But it's so true. Yeah. It's so true. It is. It we is. have to remember that. Yes. So those, it, it really, so our self-love does reflect yeah. who we have around it's us. It's, I guess, knowing who's like your associates, yes. right, from who's like your tribe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong there's with There's nothing wrong with placing all those people and having those boundaries. Yeah. Who boundaries no. is a whole other thing that I've had to learn with the last couple oh, of years. Listen, don't we all? Boundaries with myself. Social media. Yes. So, yes. Social media. Let's talk about social media since well, during COVID, during oh. during the lockdown and during the elections and all that oh, stuff. Oh, gosh, yeah. The, the craziness. <laughs> yeah. I think it got to a point where, I don't know if this happened for you, but hmm. I had to, like, mute 
you know. Oh, I defriended. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yeah. People I've known for 20, what happened? 30 years, you know, like, yeah, be just deleted. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, but you had to do that. I had to. My mental health, yes. my self-love. Yes. I didn't know how many racists I actually knew. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, during that whole thing. Wow. Because it wasn't, um, yeah, you can go into the political part. Okay, we won't even go there. But as far as like the races, like I was like, wow, like this isn't even political. This isn't even, your yeah. views are really screwed up here. Not mm -hmm. even like side white, like, you know, this side or this side, like in down the line, you know, I'm married to a white man. And for my husband to be like, you better delete them. We we don't want them around wow. to see what we're doing with our lives. Yeah. Get them out now. Yeah. I mean, that was like. Yeah, yeah. it got really intense. And mm -hmm. I, I felt like I think that was the first time I really noticed how much social media was really impacting me. I mean, yeah. I felt like already, you know. It already impacts us like uh, we should look like this. Or, yeah, yeah, but I was like my Filters. mental. Mm -hmm health of like you know just the ups and downs the emotional roller coaster I felt like I w we were already all on but right? then like you know seeing like these posts and so I was like wow but seeing posts from people you know yes so yeah so I I definitely have taken that even from that time is like if I feel like you know I'm something is bothering me mm -hmm. or is making me feel less than yeah. or just impacting me unfollow, negatively. Mute. I, it's like, I'll unfollow it. I don't need to see that. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't need I to, yeah. It's the same way. If it doesn't make me feel good. And I, mm. I tell my daughter that too. Like I tell her, yeah, if it doesn't make you feel good, you know, and I'm also the helicopter mom that checks her <laughs> phone and to see who she's following. Can't do it all. I know she's probably sending messages. I don't know. The yeah. other night she was like, yeah, I get a lot of DMs. It's like, shut your mouth. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Um, but yeah, so I'm just, you know, just know, you know, it just if it doesn't make you feel good. And yeah. it's, and I think that's, I mean, even in, at our age when things just don't, like feed your soul. That's another thing. Like right now in my life, I want things to feed my soul. I want to learn. Right. And if I, if not learn, I want to invest more in learning more from it. Right. You know, so a lot of my um, things that I follow or hashtags that I'll look up and just, you know, skim through, they're, I don't, they're mm -hmm. soul fulfilling, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I'll go through the funny, the funny memes. I'm, you know, I love my funny memes. You love those I have funny a dry memes. sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> I love my sense of humor. She has the best sense of Dogs. humor. It is it's yes. really, really funny. Yeah, it can be like borderline, like, but. It's before, it, my sense of humor <laughs> is before like everyone got offended, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's that's something we're all we're working yeah. on. I don't know. That's, I know. Yeah, but yeah, finding um, social media. There's a lot of things that I had to. I I really was disappointed in the amount of people that I've had to block because of the tensions that came up years ago. Um, but then also, you know, filters and just I'm like, people don't need to look like that, and it makes you feel yes. bad about yourself. Okay. So I definitely don't think, I mean, just going back to, you know, what we were talking about with um, just how we look. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you want to use a filter, like, oh, I'm like, have fun with it. You know, have fun with it. But I don't think that, you know, you know that should it's use filter. it to, like, make yourself feel better. Like, I know. like it's fun and all of that. And I think like, I love using filters and stuff, mm -hmm. but I know I'm also like, it's fine if I don't use filters. Yeah. Like, like it's, it's not like I'm using it to like cover up or mask something right. or, you know? And so I think that there's also like, like, you know, a balance with that. It's like, okay, if I want to use a filter, like, so what? Like, right. leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're, fun. they're fun. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, they're fun. And it should be fun, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but it shouldn't be like our whole, you know, your whole self-image is based off yeah. of off of that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. So yeah. what ways do you practice self-love? Hmm. You know, I really do try to take time out of my day. Um <laughs> 
during the week. You know, I don't like to work out on the weekends. You're like, let's go hiking. <laughs> no, let's not go hiking. I love hiking. I don't want to run across a rattlesnake in California, a, a pack of coyotes, <laughs> TX91 All of which a cat. I, I am from LA tagged. and I have never come across any of these things that Listen, you're talking about. I have lived in LA my whole life too and I come across <laughs> them often. One time, let me tell you, one time it was in my backyard and I was sitting on a, on a, a, a you know, like a brick wall, like a small brick wall. My husband decided, oh, there's a cat sitting by Kristen. It was his cat his family cat. I'm sitting there and he runs to grab the cat and runs inside. And then he goes, Kristen, get up. Kristen Marie, get up. And I was like, what? And I turn around. There's a rattlesnake. Mm. That's fun. Yeah. So he <laughs> decides to save the cat and not <laughs> save me. <laughs> I have had my, my, face-to-face -face moments with rap. That's why oh. I don't do hiking. I'm telling you, that was, I mean, I don't know where you guys were in the valley or whatever, but- Down I, the street! But I've never come into contact with any rattlesnake on uh. any hike I've been on uh -uh. or anything. So maybe it's just You're like- You're not you, looking. You have to go with me. I don't I don't want to go with you. If I'm attracting them, <laughs> okay? I had a full-on grown coyote live on my <clears throat> lawn for a week in the summer. Okay, well, not doing that. All right, we're not going on a hike, apparently, guys. But okay, but anyway, together, so together we were totally <laughs> off topic because I said I wouldn't go hiking. <laughs> we're supposed to go tomorrow. I don't want to go. Yeah. But okay. how I take my self care is um, during the week. I do make sure that I I work out. I wake up mm -hmm. at a certain hour, and it's gotten to the point of the routine is so ingrained in my body. Yes. I will wake up before my alarm. Um, and if I do not do this workout, I do not feel like myself the whole day. Yeah. Like, I, at all. I agree. Yeah, working out for me is like a must. And I think it, working out is not just like, obviously, the physical benefits are great. But I think it just sets a mindset. Because yeah. I, I, like, as you know, mm -hmm. I really push myself in yeah, my workouts. But I, but I think that helps carry over into real life of like, you know, after I'm done with a workout – that I didn't think I could get through this exercise. It's burning or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, but then I, I made it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm stronger than I think. So yeah. I think it's like, it, you are. it really like sets the tone of my day and my mental space and how I, you know, think about life and challenges. I agree. So it, that is definitely part of my self-care routine. Mm -hmm. And then having my quiet time, like being able to pray and meditate and like spend time with God, like quality time. Like mm -hmm. I have to do that. Yeah. I have been so bad with that lately. have to do that because you have to refill <sighs> yeah. mm -hmm. yourself. And, and as you know, you know, I can, I can keep going and keep going and keep going. And, and, but then at some point, you know, you're going to crash and burn. So crash. I've learned... <laughs> from all of my crashing and burning. Yep. That there. I need to be consistently checking in and filling myself up with the right stuff, yeah, you know. Yeah, fill that cup. You know, and so that I can be of service and I can be like if I'm not constantly re refilling my cup, then I have nothing to give away. Yeah. So, and I it's, tell my and it's not and it's not anyone else's responsibility to fill up my cup. No, it's my responsibility. It's yours. So I can't be mad like, oh, like I gave, I did this and I did that and I was here for you and I, you know, yeah. no, it was my responsibility to fill it back up. So I know the ways in which I can do that mm -hmm. and I need to do that. Yeah. And some, mm -hmm. some activities or, um, self-care routines fill up that cup a lot faster. Exactly. You know, they yes. really do. Yeah. Um, I tell, um, a few of my friends that are just now becoming uh, new moms, um, you're not going to want to do it. You're going to be too tired, but make time for yourself. Go get your hair done. Go get your nails done. That goes a long way. Hire the babysitter. Even though you don't want to go out, just do just it. Just do it. The The baby's going to be okay. It'll be all fine. It'll be fine. You need to be okay. Yeah. yeah if mm -hmm. I, like, if I could give any new mom advice or myself advice as a new right. mom, that Nothing. I wish I would have done that. I know. More of that. Because I feel like I went through, like, that first... Oh. Two years, and I was like, yeah. Just I was I was diagnosed with postpartum depression after my second son because I, I didn't realize I was just on this 
mm. you know, routine of child, 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 and not me. I would, you know, not that make that makeup makes any, you know, difference, but it it does. When you put on makeup, you feel good. And I wasn't like showering every day because I was like, I got throw up on me. I still got to do the laundry. Da 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 da. But I learned when I was diagnosed, like, no, Mm -hmm. your self-love has to come first because if you're not well, nobody's well. Exactly. And so I, that, yeah, that was a a lesson. That was a hard lesson, but I learned it and now I'm telling everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Do you. Yes, you tell me. (laughs) Right? Do you. Yeah, do you. I tell you too. But yeah, so here we are. Here we are. Doing We're us. just finding okay. it together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, it's still so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Thank you, Chris Christensen. I know. I drink this, this is amazing. I drank this whole thing. Vodka wines. And I usually don't. No. Look at you me. You don't. Look at Okay, so mm. in closing, mm-hmm. what is your final thought on all that? <sighs> on, on, on failure and enough, like you are enough. I think where I'm at in my life right now is like really accepting that I am enough mm-hmm. and that I don't have to be perfect to yeah. be loved, right? Mm-hmm. And just continuing working on um, my inner man, you know, like mm-hmm. the, like who I am inside and when you work on your inner self, you know, your inner beauty shines. Yeah. You know, so that's something that I'm focused, that I'm really focused on. I see that in you too. Hmm. When you step away for a little bit and Hmm. you're like, I went to church today. What are you doing? (laughs) Let's, let's do something. Like you're a little bit more, like you have filled your cup. Yes. You know? And I think that's, that's where I'm at. Being more intentional about filling my cup and not feeling guilty about that. Yeah. Yeah. And if that takes time away, if you need to step away to do that, do mm-hmm. it. What about you? Yeah. What about Mine is like perfection can't be it can't be achieved, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So um, taking what we were talking about before with um, just failures and everything, everyone fails. You know, I'm I love my failures, even though they were hard to get over. I would not change them whatsoever, mm-hmm. and I realize that no one's perfect mm-hmm. and that just makes us who we are, right? Right. Gosh, wouldn't it be so boring if everyone was perfect? It would. Like, ugh. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm taking with it. Like, yeah, no one's perfect. And social media, um, just take it as what it is. Right. No one's perfect. We got to love ourselves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And fill our cups. Fill our cups. Yes. We need to fill. We need to fill more of this. (laughs) This is really good, Chris Christensen. (laughs) This is really good. We love it. We love it. More rosé. Mm-hmm. <laughs>